What with President Trump surrendering himself earlier today in Fulton County, Georgia, and that spectacle down there, and then the debate last night in Milwaukee of the Republican candidates, I guarantee you that the Biden administration thinks that we've all forgotten the disgusting, despicable, debased visit from President Trump to Maui to comfort and bring empathy to the victims of that horrific wildfire. Well, we haven't forgotten it. We won't forget it. We'll keep reminding you. Uh, take a look at this great coverage from Tony Kennett at the Daily Signal. He was on the ground. Watch. They got to Ukraine quicker than they got to their own state. The first that any of you guys heard from President Biden was after the rest of the mainland knew that the fires were going on, that there was this chaos, this tumult, this tremendous loss of life. What do you say when the president of the United States says no comment and then goes bicycling? What he's not doing actually for, for the citizens of, of this country, for the citizens of Maui and Lahaina, it's completely disrespectful. And now he's going to be coming here tomorrow and all of a sudden it's going to clog up the road Roads. They're not going to let anybody through. It's going to slow everything down just so he can come in and take a look and and do nothing yet again. So it's ridiculous. It's nonsense. And f him. let me just say straight to you, President Biden, I pray for your soul. Just repent from your posturing and your lack of integrity and your lack of compassion. When you're, when you're the president of the United States of America, you have to know what what's going on. You know, you, you got all these people that surround, you know, supposed to be advising you what's going on. For you to say something like, no comment. I, I don't know, I, I can't even respond to such comment. We have the largest Marine base in the world, the largest Navy fleet right there, right there. We can see the island. It could have been here in 12 hours. You think that if he, if he wanted to, the president of the United States or one of his chiefs of staff could have ordered military assistance from, from Pearl Harbor and the, the U.S. Pacific Fleet? There's no question they could have done that. They did it for Ukraine way quicker than the response here in Hawaii. Joining us now is Tony Kennett. He's also the host of the Tony Kennett Show at WIBC in Indianapolis, Indiana. Great work there, Tony. And by the way, all of that, all that frustration, all that anger, that was before he got on the ground there. It was really palpable. Thanks for, for doing that. Absolutely. And what we saw on the ground in Maui is the exact opposite of what's being reported at CNN, MSNBC, you know, running around in circles talking about how wonderful Biden's visit was and how a great job the federal government's doing. Uh, unfortunately, that message doesn't seem to have gotten to the victims of the tragic wildfires that destroyed the town of Lahaina. Uh, in fact, people have described FEMA as being in the way. And that was before Biden showed up and insulted them all by comparing uh, all of his troubles and in, in a 20 minute house fire uh, to the fire that has at this point probably killed uh, hundreds of adults, probably somewhere between 700 and 1200. Yeah. Uh, again, conflicting sources and uh, Lord knows how many children. Let's take a look at what you're talking about here. This is it's it's it was really the worst part of this entire visit. There's something about this president where he feels like to be empathetic, he needs to sort of outdo people's grief. Like, oh, you had a fire. Let me tell you about my fire. You know, this is gross. And here's what he had to say. I don't want to compare difficulties, but we have a little sense, Jill and I, what it's like to lose a home. Years ago, now 15 years ago, I was in Washington doing Meet the Press. And it was a sunny Sunday. And lightning struck at home on a little lake it's outside of our home, not a lake, a big pond, and hit a wire and came up underneath our home into the heating ducts, the air conditioning duct. To make a long story short, I almost lost my wife, my 67 Corvette, <laughs> and my cat. But all kidding aside. All kidding aside, uh, Tony, immediately, uh, like moments, after the president said that as it was broadcast across the state. You shared with us, one of your sources sent you this text. Take a look at it. Most despicable thing this president has ever said, how do you compare almost losing your effing Corvette to the children burned in their effing homes? That's, um, that's visceral, Tony. Especially because the individual who sent me that text did lose everything and did almost lose his kids in that fire. Uh, th thankfully, they were with their mother at the time, um, who was able to get them out of the house. Uh, by the way, that individual has since been denied FEMA coverage uh, because uh, he has a home insurance, and so FEMA doesn't work with people who have insurance. So good job, Biden's federal government there. 
And this is, again, the same kind of thing that we've come to expect on the routine from Biden. Uh, he just got off of uh, insulting several Gold Star families uh, with his botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. And as if that wasn't enough, now he needs to take a moment from his two vacations in a month to waltz over to Hawaii to let people know that he understands what it's like to go through a tragedy like this. After all, he almost lost his car and his cat. Yeah. Tony, uh, another great thing about going on the ground and actually talking to the people who are affected by events is that you get a perspective that you don't get uh, over here, first in the mainland, but certainly over here in Washington, D.C. That one citizen who said, listen, we can see Oahu right here. We know there's a huge Navy base there. They, the, the ships could have been here in 30 minutes. Why didn't they send military aid? No one here in Washington raised that issue. Have you gotten any follow-up on that? I know we sent military to Katrina in the aftermath. Why haven't we sent any military to aid these victims? So after Pearl Harbor attack in 1945, the United States made sure there were at least six different seaborne watercraft on station at Pearl Harbor, and those could have been easily dispatched to aid the citizens of Maui and Lahaina. And by the way, yes, they could have been of use because there were boats, over 70 boats, that's seven zero boats that were burning in the Lahaina Harbor. So yes, the U.S. military could have been effective in helping out, but that would require uh, someone in the brass, instead of performing an equity session, actually doing something to help the citizens of Maui. And it's very transparent to them as well, because they, I have, we didn't find one person on the island who had a positive view of President Biden and his administration. And we looked, we looked yeah. everywhere. And even the most blue-haired of progressives were extremely pissed at him. This is a state that voted 64% for President Biden. So are, are you sure, Tony, like we want to be fair and balanced here. Did you just not seek out that 36% of the MAGA hat-wearing right-wing Hawaiians for your report? Well, as everyone knows, deep blue states are MAGA country. Just ask Jesse Smollett. Uh, but when it comes to the the individuals there on the island, I did go looking. I, I Tim Kennedy and I went everywhere that we could. I was sitting in the story that I told you, uh, watching President Biden say those horrific comments live. I was sitting between a a blue collar old union Democrat worker and a former teacher who was a like a leading member of the Hawaii NEA. So both very liberal. In fact, one of the, the blue members said that, that the Democrats had finally lost her support for those comments. Interesting. Uh, and of course, I'm not joking when I set this segment up. The White House doesn't want to talk about this anywhere more. They think it's done. They did what they had to do. They got their photo op. Uh, are the people of Hawaii right now are forgotten in all of this. And that's one of the key things that you really need to look at uh, celebrities like Jason Momoa and then governors like Josh Green, who got up in front of the tragedy and told everyone to cancel their vacation plans to Maui. Yeah. Maui has one source of income, and that's tourism. And so by saying that, even though they've started walking those statements back, the real danger now post fire for the citizens of Maui is starving because business has been essentially cut off due to the preening and posturing of individuals who wanted to appear grandiose and gracious. Thank you uh, so much for this report, Tony Kennett. Great work there for The Daily Signal, and I, I presume you're doing great work on WIBC with The Tony Kennett Show, but I haven't listened, I'll be honest. Tony Katz won't let me. You should talk to that guy. He's very protective. What are you going to do? Understood. Thank you, Tony. There's more to come on O'Connor tonight. You're watching Salem News Channel.